let's get started with the first demo. In this demo, we'll see how to launch Kali Linux using VMware. So guys, you can install Kali Linux using any virtualization software. It could be VMware or VirtualBox. In this demo, I'll show you how to install it using VMware. So first of all, obviously, we'll have to install VMware, right? So just type of VMware. And it's the first link that you find. You can go ahead and download VMware Workstation Pro. You have it in the downloads. Here you can download Workstation Player as well, or you can download VMware Workstation Pro. Now, once that is downloaded, you'll have to download a Kali Linux ISO image. For that, you'll have to go for official Kali Linux website. Just type for Kali Linux, and it's the first link. You can see downloads option here. Click on download. And yeah, you can see different download options here. You have Kali Linux Lite for 64 bit as well as 32 bit. And then there is Kali Linux 64 bit and 32. And you have separate images for VMware and virtual box as well. Suppose you want to skip the entire lengthy procedure of installing it and you want to just use the image, then you can go ahead and use this Kali Linux 64 bit for VMware or virtual box. Same goes for the 32 bit as well. But since we are focusing on installing right now, let's just go ahead and download our ISO file and install it from the beginning until last step. I've already downloaded it, so I have a ISO file downloaded on my computer. So all you have to do is just click on the torrent link, it'll be downloaded. Let's open VMware then. So as you can see, I have VMware Workstation Pro installed here. So I already have two, about two virtual machines installed on my VMware Workstation. As you can see on the home page, three different options. It says create a new virtual machine or open a virtual machine and connect to remote server. So if you want to create a Kali Linux or any other virtual machine from step one, you can use this create a new virtual machine option. Well, if you have an image of an virtual machine already, and if you want to just use it and avoid installation procedure, then you can go ahead and use this open a virtual machine option. Well, just click on this create a new virtual machine and click on next. As you can see here, you have an option which says install a disk image file ISO file you'll have to attach here. So click on browse. Let's see where I've stored my color Linux. As you can see, I already have it here. And there's one file here. Let me click on that and open. So yeah, don't bother about this error. It usually shows that. And then click on next here. So it's asking which operating system will be installed on this virtual machine. I want it to be Linux. So make sure you select Linux 64 bit and click on next. You have an option to name your virtual machine. Let's say Kali Linux. And where do I want to store it? In my documents under virtual machines, Kali Linux. Sure, and click on next. It says it already exists. Let me try this one then. Let's say Kali Linux 1 and next. Yeah. So basically, your Kali Linux will need about a 20 GB. Let's assign some 40 GB here. That's the maximum disk size that you can allot. Well, you can allot more than that as well, but minimum it needs about 20 GB. And you have an option which says store virtual disk as a single file or multiple files. Let's just select store virtual disk as a single file to avoid complications and click on next here. So as you can see, you can review your virtual machine settings here. You have an option to make changes to the settings. You can make changes right now or you can do it later as well. Let's just go ahead and make changes now. Click on this customize hardware option here. Well, as for the memory for this virtual machine, it totally depends on what you're using virtual machine for. If you're not using it for heavy works, then you can assign least amount of memory. Let's say I want to assign about 2 GB. There we go. And as for the processors, number of processors one and the number of core processors, you can choose as many as you want. Let's say two. This will increase the performance of your virtual machine. So and again, it totally depends on whatever you want to choose. And yeah, we have already attached the image network adapter. You can set for NAT. USB controller and sound card, you can retain the default settings. And as for the display, click on accelerated 3D graphics since what Kali Linux has a graphical user interface. And it says 768 MB is the recommended amount of memory that you can use for graphics. So let's go ahead and select that and click on close. Well, you can actually make all the settings after installing Kali Linux as well. No problem there. Once you've done that, click on finish here. As you can see, my Kali Linux image is ready for installation. You have two options to power up. As you can see, you have this option here. You can click on that to power on this virtual machine or you can go ahead and click on this. Let me click on this. So once you click on that, you should be greeted with this Kali boot screen. As you can see, there are a lot of options here. We did discuss live option earlier, right? 
So if you don't want any trace of Kali Linux on your operating system, you can go ahead and use live option here. You have live USB persistence mode and live USB encrypted persistence as well. Suppose you want to store some data and save it for a later reboots. You can use live persistent option here. And most of the time people get confused with this install and graphical install. Just don't go ahead and click on install option. Do it only if you are well versed with command line interface. So basically that install option is for command line interface. So you'll be greeted with Kali Linux command line interface. Since if you are doing it, if you're using Kali Linux for the first time, go ahead with graphical install. Select the graphical install and click enter. So as you can see, it will start mounting storage devices. Whole installation process might take about 10 minutes. So it's prompting you to select a language. So select your preferred language, then your country location. Let's say English and click on enter. And it's asking you for the country location. Just give United States and enter. And I want the keyboard to be configured with American English. You can choose any native language. Like I said earlier, it supports multilingual or it supports multiple languages. So go ahead and choose it. But it might complicate the way you use Kali Linux later. So you can always go ahead and stick ahead with English only. Well, it doesn't matter. So as you can see, it's configuring the network. So it will detect the ISO file and load installation component and then prompt you to enter a host name for your system. Well, in this installation, let's just enter Kali and click on enter. You can give the name you want. And next it's asking you for the domain name. Suppose you have a set of virtual machines and if you want to give all of them a domain name, you can assign a domain name as well, but it's optional. Let's not give any domain name here and click on enter. The next thing it does is it will prompt you for the password that you'll have to enter every time you launch your Kali Linux. So just give some password of your choice. And click on continue. The best thing about Kali Linux is you can set up date and time as well. You can make it later as well, but you can choose it here. So just click on Eastern or whichever choice you like and click on enter. So the installer will now probe your disk and offers you four different choices. As you can see, it says guided use entire disk. Guided use entire disk can set up LVM, which is logical volume manager. Same thing, which is encrypted and manual. So if you are an expert, if you've already used this Kali Linux before, you can go ahead and select any of these three options from the bottom. That's LVM or manual or encrypted LVM. Otherwise, you can always go ahead and choose guided use entire disk option here if you're a beginner and click on enter. So this is the disk partition where the, all the data will be stored and click on continue. It's asking if you want to store all files in one partition or if you want to make partitions. So depending on your needs, you can go ahead and choose to keep all your files in single partition, which is default or you have separate partition for one or more of the top level directories. Let's just choose the first option and click on enter. So once you've done that, you'll have one last chance to review your disk configuration. Once you're sure that you've given correct details, click on enter here. It's asking if the changes that you make to Kali Linux should be written to the disk or not. So say yes. So it will start partition and install the virtual machine. It took a while, but as you can see, installation is almost done. It's asking me to configure the package manager. Well, if you select no in the session, you will not be able to install packages from Kali repositories later and click on continue. So suppose if you want to install other repositories or updates later on, you can always go and click on yes. Otherwise, it's always otherwise you can go for no as well. Now it's going to configure the package manager. It'll install package manager and configure it. Then it'll install grub bootloader. And it's asking if you want to install grub bootloader to master boot record. Definitely yes. So select yes and click on continue. So it's asking to select the device manually. You can click this select the device. So yeah guys, we're done here. So you can finally click on continue option to reboot your new Kali installation. So as you can see, the entire process took about 10 to 11 minutes. So yeah, let's go ahead and click on continue here. It's going to finish the installation. So guys, as you can see the installation process from the step where we select the language till the last step is same. It's just the medium on which you're installing is different. For example, right now we used VMware. Later on, I'll show you how to use VirtualBox. But once your Kali Linux image is ready to boot, the rest of the installation process is similar to this. So it's finished installing. It's loading the image. So if you have done everything right during the installation process and according to your needs, you land up in this page. Username. So we've given it this Kali, right? 
KALI and password. As you can see, it's showing an error. It says that didn't work. Please try again. This is mostly because if first time when you log in, you should use word root as your default username. But later on, once you've already logged in, you can change the username according to your need. So root and password, you can use the same password which you set during installation process. So as you can see, login is successful. And here I go. My Kali Linux is up and running. So I can start using Kali Linux according to my needs. So once you've done that, you can go ahead and install VMware tools so that you can maximize it full screen and all that stuff. You can also go ahead and change the date and time settings. As you can see here, you can go for the settings option here and do the settings. And you can start using Kali Linux for hacking and penetration testing purposes. So it's as easy as that, guys. So please go ahead and try installing it. Well, if you find any errors during installation process, let us know in the comment session. We'll get back to you as soon as possible.